Dear viewers, greetings. This present video is about an introduction to centrifuge. The contents of this video includes an introduction about centrifuge, principle of centrifuge, parts of centrifuge, operation of centrifuge, factors to consider when choosing centrifuge, and finally, handling of centrifuge. Centrifuge. A centrifuge is a device for separating particles from a solution according to their size, shape, density, viscosity of the medium and rotor speed. A centrifuge is used to perform the centrifugation process. A centrifuge is usually found in most labs including academic, clinical and research institutions. The whole centrifuge machine is capable of regulating temperature and speed to facilitate the separation process. Principle of centrifuge. The principle behind the centrifuge is the sedimentation principle due to gravitational force, which is employed by all types of centrifuges. When a tube is spun with the bottom side outwards to the spin, the centrifugal force created by the spin acts like high gravity on the tube's sample. In a solution, Particles whose density is higher than that of the solvent sink and particles that are lighter than it, it floats to the top. The greater the difference in density, the faster they move. If there is no difference in density, the particles stay steady. Parts of centrifuge. Centrifuge have nine main parts. They are main rack, rotors or rotating arms, motor, dividing shaft, containers, imbalance detector, tachometer, refrigeration system, and finally, security protection system. The first part of the centrifuge is main rack. Main rack is a frame composed of a body box with a door cover and a container on the inside. The whole box is made up of steel and the inside tank is made up of stainless steel. Rotors or rotating arms. The tubes or bottles containing the liquids to be centrifuged are held in a place by the rotor. Rotor is the rotating unit of centrifuge. Rotor is the movable part of machine which separates the particles present in the sample. For low speed centrifugation, Rotor is made up of brass or steel with low stress and for high speed centrifugation, rotor is made up of aluminium or titanium with high stress. The rotors are divided into several angular rotors and some horizontal rotors. The resistance in the horizontal rotors is larger than that in the angular rotors. The third part of the centrifuge is motor. Motor is in the center that is very powerful and creates a spin. The motor powers the rotors and allows the tube to spin at an assigned speed and it is attached to the driving shaft. The fourth part of the centrifuge is driving shaft. The driving system is run by a motor, a drive shaft and a mechanism for damping. The motor runs on an alternating current frequency or AC frequency and turns a sealed and lubricated drive shaft and the resultant force and vibrations and noises are absorbed by the damping system. The fifth part of the centrifuge is containers. Containers hold tubes with the materials or sample and is rest on the rotor. The sixth part of the centrifuge is imbalance detector. Some instruments have an internal imbalance detector that monitors the rotor during operation causing automatic shutdown if rotor slowed or severely out of balance. And the seventh part of the centrifuge is tachometer. A tachometer indicates the speed in RPM. Most modern centrifuges use electronic tachometers in which a magnet rotates around a coil to produce a current that can be measured. The eighth part of the centrifuge is refrigeration system. 
the cooling system adopts a wholly sealed airtight cooled coplant compressor unit which has circuits for both refrigeration and heating control and the final and ninth part of the centrifuge is security protection system security protection system is a safety protection system that has a main current protection high temperature protection high speed protection balance protection and the door cover protection operation of centrifuge the operation of centrifuge have five steps in step 1 place the test tube with the sample into the container or portals in step 2 balance the samples but insert water filled tubes for balance when there is an odd number of samples in step 3 close the lid and select the required time and speed in step 4 start the centrifuge and wait for the cycle to complete and in step 5 when the centrifuge stops take out the balance and the sample the separated sample is now ready for analysis factors to consider when choosing a centrifuge When choosing a centrifuge there are many factors to consider to find the centrifuge that best suits your specific needs some of the main considerations are speed range setting resolution rotor imbalance display type overall dimension centrifuge weight energy efficient nominal functioning voltage and power consumptions The first factor is speed range. When selecting a centrifuge, it is important to consider the speed of the rotor as this will determine the maximum amount of force that can be generated. The faster the rotor speed, the higher the centrifugal force. The second factor is setting resolution. The centrifuge is equipped with options to set it to operate automatically without manual configuration changes or the need of human supervision the third factor is rotor imbalance an ideal centrifuge should have sensors that detect any rotor imbalance to avoid spilling and disruptions of separating procedures the fourth factor is display type centrifuge displays offer a wide variety of features including lcd or liquid crystal displays amoled displays and specific display families the fifth factor is overall dimension the overall size of the device depends on its purpose some industrial centrifuges are up to 5 meters wide while some medical centrifuges are no wider than 30 cm scale and the sixth factor is centrifuge weight different scientific centrifuges vary widely in weight with some models weighing as little as a few kilograms while others can weigh up to 15 tons the seventh factor is energy efficient variable frequency drive or vft can help to reduce energy consumption by regulating the speed of the centrifuge motor this can be particularly effective during low load operation where the motor can be operated at a lower speed to conserve energy and the next factor is nominal functioning voltage depending on the location of where the centrifuge needs to be used functional voltage needs to be considered some areas have a plug voltage of 240 volts while some have a large working voltage a large industrial centrifuge cannot be used in a residential area as it requires a lot of voltage for it to barely function the ninth factor is power consumptions a high power consuming machine requires a steady and reliable energy source so that it functions properly without failing handling of centrifuge for proper functioning of the centrifuge 
it requires constant care and maintenance. There are some measures to consider before, during and after using the device to increase its lifespan. They are lubricate the machine, regular repairing, regular cleaning and laboratory personnel. First, lubricate the machine. The rings in the centrifuge are crucial as they prevent leaking from the sample. Hence, lubrication of rings after cleaning, rotor installation and repairing with head edge grease is necessary. The second, regular repairing. The centrifuges should be checked regularly for any damage, unfamiliar noises, grinding and unnecessary vibrations. The damages and dysfunctionality should be repaired regularly. Third, regular cleaning. The rotors, chamber of rotors, the interior of the centrifuge and electrical components are some of the parts that need constant cleaning using alcohol-based disinfectant and a soft cloth. Fourth, laboratory personnel. It should be ensured that the personnel using the centrifuge know how to operate it well. The tubes are balanced and adjusting speed and compartment masses or things the operator should know before using the machine. Dear viewers, that's all about an introduction to centrifuge. Thank you for your support. Thank you.